Throughout my years in high school, I'd essentially manifested my dreams into reality. I had the nation in a chokehold, and every Power 5 program on this side of Alaska had pitched to me to go and play for their school, not to mention the NIL money that may have or may have not been boosted. You see, freshman through junior year, I was undoubtedly the man. I had scouts coming to watch me at every game, and they often left pitching to me in some way or fashion. You couldn't stop me. As a 6'3", 205-pound QB, I had an absolute cannon, but the leg work I was able to do had 24-7 sports and on three calling me a blue chipper. I felt that I was untouchable until I wasn't. Coming into my senior year, I had gotten into a bit of trouble, and long story short, it kept me off the field the entire year. Because of this, along with the word getting out there, those same offers I had bragged so heavily about were gone. I had lost all my scholarships and the promises that came along with them. I thought my football career was over and I was absolutely crushed. The name Jabari Graham rang bells out on the field and around the nation. I even picked up the name One Take Bari. In an instant, I could make anything happen on that field. It just took a single play. I didn't think I'd ever have another chance to do that again until I got the call from Virginia Tech right here in my home state. After talking with Coach Brent Pry, it turns out they were the only school to not pull their scholarship and the only school willing to give a kid a second chance. I'm not sure what would happen next year, but I knew that I wanted to dedicate it to pushing the football program forward, hopefully bringing success to the Hokies on and off the field. And maybe, just maybe, I could become a hometown hero. And my second chance at football wouldn't be in vain. I had the insane task of starting out my college career against the number one college in the nation and a powerhouse known to be the most dominant of its era, University of Alabama. So much for stepping into pressure, it had seemed like I had leaped head first, but there was no way I was backing down. I tried my best to keep calm, but I had to admit I was extremely nervous. But after a few snaps, I started to mellow out. And besides, my teammates assured me that they had my back. And with that confidence, I ended up scoring my first ever collegiate TD. Let's go! Coach ran the ball all first half, but the opportunity I did get, I took advantage of, it, including this 49 yard bomb that my wideout climbed the ladder to get and come down with. And that set up my first ever passing tutty in a Virginia Tech Uni to Nick Gallo getting us back into the ball game. Throughout the passing game, Nick had become my saving grace, and he was a big part of the reason we were still fighting in this game. But in the red zone, I got hurt and had to sit out with a bruised elbow and I watched as we struggled to move the ball. After that, Alabama was just too much for us. We fall to the number one school on the polls and start the season 0-1. My game wasn't bad considering it was my first ever as a Hokie, but of course I looked to improve next game as well as throughout the season. Our second game was much more of a light week and definitely required less heavy lifting on the job. We faced an FCS school, and while I wasn't taking them lightly, I was excited to show what I could do. Coach implemented more play action into the game plan this week, and Nick was eating his food, and even in the rain, the 50-50 balls were taking the top off the opposing cover. My receivers made my job super easy. That is until I threw my first pick of the season on a comeback route. I shouldn't have underestimated the DB's hips. Thankfully, it had little effect on the outcome of the game. And we walk off the turf with our first win of the season and my first win as a college QB. It felt great to get that first dub under my belt. In our third game, we hopped on a road and traveled to Dowdy Ficklin Stadium to take on the Pirates. The Pirates were not to be underestimated. After all, they were undefeated. I was still pretty inexperienced as a freshman QB, but I started to understand the defensive scheme more with each snap. And that was part of the reason we got on the board in the first half. But it wasn't all consistency on my end as I missed a wide open receiver that had beat his coverage. And maybe it was because of the rain, but Coach was being way more conservative on third down than I would have liked. But when Coach actually put trust in me, I like to think I delivered even through the rain. We had one more chance to make this game interesting and I wasn't about to give up. With no timeouts, I had to be the most poised I've ever been. And I made sure to put some extra spin on the passes this drive. But in the end, we lost on the missed field goal and dropped a one and two. I was crushed. I did everything I could, but it wasn't enough. On the bright side, I accumulated the most passing yards in a game in my short career. 352, I was slinging that thing. In our fourth game, we looked to bounce back and my goal was to gain more trust within the coaching staff as QB1. And even though the season hadn't started out like I planned, I was excited about my ongoing development. I was not excited about my wide out dropping the church's money on third down. But ultimately, we entered next play mode and made up for it with a deep dot down the middle for my first pass and TD of the game. And I had no trouble throwing another absolute dot to my tight end, Nick Gallo, the following drive. I even got in the end zone myself midway through the third. Let's go! With this being an absolute dog walk, coach took me out in the fourth and we cruised to our second win of the season. I came away with three tutties and no INTs. All things considered, I couldn't ask for a better 
better performance from myself. We took the road to the Peach State to play our opening ACC game and possibly one of our most important games of the year, our rivalry game against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets in the Battle of the Tech. This game would be a statement not only for me, but for our season as a whole. It was absolutely rocking in Bobby Dodd Stadium, and I drew from that energy, using my legs, scoring our first tutty of the game. I continued my efficient play throughout the first quarter, and it led to another punch in before the quarter was even over with. The heater I was on should be studied in schools. I was unconscious, and as a team, we carried that success right into the second. By the third, we were in a groove, and I was giving gifts to my guys with all my presence out there we carved up the defense at almost every turn and ultimately ended up running the clock out in victory formation at the end our team was ecstatic as we controlled this rivalry game pretty much from start to finish we won the battle of the tech and i was honored with player of the game the numbers didn't jump out at me but i made plays when it counted and ultimately that led to our first winning conference play with our next game being against unc a team in our division coach expressed to us that this was just as important as our last game so far being undefeated in our conference was the highlight of our season and we wanted to keep it that way. I played great in my last outing, but it was no time to take my foot off the gas pedal. I had to be better, and I planned to be against the Tar Heels. I started throwing darts, gauging the defensive scheme. I had been in a groove since last week, and I was comfortable taking what the defense gave me. And them underestimating my leg work led to my first TD of the game, punching it in for six. But I can't pretend it was all perfect as I missed a wide open receiver that would have been a huge gain. My bad, bro. It was a close game still by the third, and I just wanted to limit mistakes. And I started to extend plays at a higher level than before. And that led to our second tutty of the game by my HB1. Let's go! We did a good job of getting down the field once again, and our efforts gave us the lead late in the game. And with our defense clutching up, I watched on the sideline as we were able to extend that lead even further. As time ran out, we ended up with another win. And I got player of the game honors once again. I may have not passed the ball into the end zone, but I led us to a win. That's all that really matters at this point. Even with being plunged into the starting lineup. I like to think that my rookie season is a success so far. I'm still learning more of the playbook every day, and my overall athleticism and skill set have helped me out a ton. But playing this position at the collegiate level would require far more for me if I wanted to make a name for myself. We're 4-2, and two, and even though I felt that we should have won the games that we lost, it wasn't the worst record in the world, let alone in our conference. I had to get better. I had to stay focused. And I had to continue to be someone that the guys in the locker room could rely on. Time to lock in.